Hello there everyone, how you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash malicious compliance, where you don't always get what you want, but you do get what you deserve. If you enjoy, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, and share the video with some other people you know. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Ex-husband, ghost sex wife, racks up a huge bill. He clearly didn't think things through. This lady calls him, puzzled by why she got charged a one-time fee, $49 for a wireless access point. It's Gen 1 equipment for wireless setup, top boxes for optic TV. She's even more puzzled. Why would she, since she has that charge, when she doesn't have TV services from us? I inform her she does. It started more or less a month ago. She's disputing that because Optic TV isn't available in her area. Now I'm confused. She lives in a small town and there's no Optic TV there. I do a little digging and find out that someone was still on her account and got a three-year contract to get a free TV for Optic TV and Internet. She begins to cry on the phone and tells me her now ex-husband had an affair with a younger woman. Divorced her, milked her for as much as he could, and apparently still is milking her for more. He totally ghosted her, moved to Alberta, changed his email, phone number, and blocked her on all social media and so on. In my mind, I'm like, what a dickhead. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, if you cancel the services, you're on the hook to pay for cancellation fees and so on. I can tell her, though, I can remove his access to your account, and you can also add on a password. Downgrade the internet and TV to the bare essentials, and I can attempt to redirect your TV gift from his address to yours. But there's no guarantee, as it's been processed already. I can hear the light going off on her head. Wait, what? You have where he's living at right now? Why, yes... He's got TV and internet services, so there is a service address. She goes really quiet and says her lawyer and her have been trying to track him down, but his family and friends are being tight-lipped about it. She asks if I'm allowed to give that info to her. I smile and reply, This is your account. You have unrestricted access for service addresses, phone numbers, emails that your now ex-husband can, that your ex-husband provided to us to get hooked up. She asks that I can give her his new address, his new cell number, and contact info over the phone right now. She was ecstatic, and after giving her all the details from her account regarding the second service address, downgrade anything, and he was a hockey fan, and there was a game playing right now with his team. So I wish I could have been a fly in the wall when the game cuts out, and he calls in to ask what happened, and discovers he's been removed. And there's an account pin, and he's been discovered by his ex-wife and lawyer. Manager forces me to get a doctor's note, despite it being illegal to do so. The doctor writes him in the most passive-aggressive note, signing me off for two weeks instead of two days to teach him a lesson. I posted this, but it got removed, and I think it was maybe because I didn't make the malicious compliance clear enough. So I'm going to try again and make it extra clear. When I was in my early 20s, I worked at a supermarket. I should note that I was a pretty reliable employee, as I was never late. In fact, I often got in early, and I rarely called in sick. At the time this happened, I had not called in sick for nine months, and even then, the manager had sent me home. I had been up all night, swinging between burning hot and freezing cold, so I was obviously feverish, and I had been throwing up at both ends, shall we say. At one point, about 2 a.m., I was on the toilet with my head in the sink, Utterly miserable. I must have passed out because the next thing I knew, I was lifting my head off the sink, and it was 7 a.m. I was due to start work at 12 that day, but that obviously wasn't going to happen. So I called up the manager. Let's call this manager Steve. 
Steve was known for being a real a-hole. He never believed anyone who called in sick. Well, except his best buds, usually other managers, never the lowly staff. But often called him sick himself. A lot of the time we knew it was because he was hungover and not actually sick. The conversation went as follows. Hey, Steve, sorry, I can't come in, I'm sick. Steve responds, Worth what? I don't know. I think it might be the flu. I've been up all night being sick and I have a fever. Don't be stupid. If you were the flu, you'd be completely knocked down. I need you in. Come in or you're fired. I can't. I just told you I can't stop vomiting. I passed out. And Steve, while growling angrily, Either come in or bring a doctor's note or you're fired. In the UK, you are legally allowed to self-certify for five days. This means you can tell your employer you are sick and you do not need a doctor's note. If you're sick for more than five days, you then need a note. It is also illegal to demand a doctor's note during the self-certify period. I knew this, but I was terrified. This was also during the recession. I couldn't afford to lose my job. So I got myself dressed, almost passed out trying to do so, then trudged to the doctor's some 25 minutes to walk away. I ended up sitting in the doctor's office for a little over an hour, which the walk-ins was pretty good. I get in to see the doctor, and she is furious at me for coming in. You're not supposed to come to the doctor's when you know you have a cold or flu, and of course I knew I should be able to self-certify. She told me as such, saying I shouldn't be here and should have stayed at home. I then explained what had happened with Steve and how he threatened to fire me over this, and I couldn't afford to lose my job. I was struggling as it was. My doctor turned her anger towards my manager. She asked if I got sick pay from the company, and I said yes. He wants a sick note, does he? The doctor says, okay. I'll give him a sick note. Now, my manager just wanted a note, confirming I was sick. But instead, my doctor wrote something along the lines of this. Insert name here has come to the surgery because insert manager name has insisted she come in. In spite of the fact that this is illegal and all employees are allowed to self-certify, Due to being forced to make this unnecessary and highly dangerous trip when the patient is ill, has a fever of 39 Celsius, and almost passed out in the waiting room, I'm signing, insert my name here, off for f two full weeks to recover. Had, insert my name here, been allowed to self-certify, as is the law, they might have only needed a few days, but due to straining themselves... They now require two full weeks. They are not permitted to work until two weeks later. The doctor said she would have signed me off longer, but this was the longest she could do without requiring further evidence. So basically, instead of just being off for a few days, I was now signed off for a full two weeks and I'd be paid for it. I went to my place of work, at which point one of the duty managers saw me and asked what the heck I was doing here. Go home, as I was obviously very unwell. I explained what happened. They agreed to help me downstairs to Steve's office and went with me inside. I handed Steve the note. He looked worried and tried to say, I wasn't being serious about firing you. Well, gee... When you angrily growled it down the phone, you sure sounded like it. The duty manager then declared they were going to drive me home. It was clear Steve wanted to argue, but had the sense to know he shouldn't. The duty manager then drove me home, made sure I was okay, then went back to work where they informed our union rep of what had happened. Steve had a disciplinary hearing where he was given a severe reprimand and a warning. Steve tried to argue he never said I'd be fired, and I was lying and just decided to go to the doctors. But the duty manager said they heard him admit to it when he said that to me he didn't really mean it. I felt better after a few days and enjoyed my two weeks off, fully paid, and enjoyed the nice weather we had.
Meanwhile, Steve was forced to work overtime because we were short-staffed. So, thanks to the doctor, instead of being off for a few days, I ended up getting a nice two-week paid vacation, and Steve was given a final warning. All because he insisted I get a doctor's note. Put in my two weeks notice. Covert narcissistic supervisor reveals herself. I have been working at a super small construction company for the past two years. I've put my best foot forward every day, and never had any issues with anyone in the company. As of three months ago, they moved me from an infield coordinator to an accounting position. It was an emergency move, as one of the employees stole 80 k from the company, and they needed an immediate replacement. My new supervisor, we'll call her Mary, was always super kind to me and we'd become pretty good in work friends. Well, these past couple months have been heck. I hate the new position, and to be fair, I'm not very good at it. So I found a new position, and I've been keeping it a secret for a while. I let the owner know first, and he was very kind and receptive to it. The issue started when Mary got word of it. She immediately cornered me and started going on this rant, saying things like, Why didn't you tell me? You're being incredibly unfair and selfish. I can't believe you would do this to us. This is unacceptable. Don't ask me for a referral because you're not getting one from me. And so on. I politely told her that the opportunity was something I simply couldn't pass up. She then went to the owner and asked for any details I might have given him about my new company and position. I believed to try and sabotage me leaving, and thankfully I hadn't discussed any details about it with anyone. It was awkward after that, but didn't think anything of it. The next day was when things took a turn for the worse. Mary decided to be petty and removed all of my authorizations to any accounts I had, so I couldn't perform any of my daily tasks. I didn't want to leave on a sour note, so I bought it up to the owner as Mary was out of office that day. He reauthorized my accounts and I continued to work. Mary was back the following day and was completely livid that I went around her and talked directly to the owner. Her actions towards me would only get worse from here on out. The next day, I came in to notice my desk was moved and my computer access was taken away yet again. Cue the malicious compliance, since I couldn't do any of my daily tasks, and really didn't feel like dealing with the screaming Mary, I was on Reddit for basically the whole day. At the end of the day, Mary came into the new back storage office and said, Busy today. I know mine was. And I just smiled and said, Yup, exhausting. She did not like that response and went to the owner to say that I was purposefully not doing my job and that my last two weeks would be pointless so we should just let her, as in me, go now. The owner disagrees and calls me into his office and after I explained what she had done, he gave me access again and told Mary to work from home. Another day goes by. It's extremely peaceful now that Mary is working remote. But unfortunately, this does not mean my day was getting any easier. Instead of taking my access away, she had IT start forwarding all my emails to the other employees in other departments that I had nothing to do with, my specific position. At this point, I only had three days left, and I just took it at, uh, okay, that sucks for them, but it's on Mary's head if anyone has any questions. I looked at my PTO and had way more than I thought. So why not use those for my last days? And that's exactly what I did. I was originally supposed to let all vendors know and start forwarding them to the appropriate people and interview second round candidates for my position, but not anymore. The owner was completely okay with it and understood that Mary was being toxic and that he would have a talk with her about her attitude and position if this continues. Now with my last two days, and me being on PTO, I finally thought I was safe from Mary. But lo and behold, she was still holding a massive grudge. As if leave me leaving my position as a, was a personal attack on her. She called me at 4.30 in the morning and left me a voicemail saying our company was having an accounting emergency. 
and I need to come in immediately. I called her back about four hours later, which she was fuming about, and went on a massive rant about how I'm extremely entitled. I will never get anywhere with that attitude, and she's embarrassed for our company to say I ever worked here, and that if she ever finds out where I'll be working, she'll make sure I'm fired and will never have a job in this town again. I laughed at her, and she went ballistic. Like when you take a four-year-old's toy away, screaming so loud her voice was shaking, saying silly things like I have no respect for her or the company, and then I'll rot in the H-E double hockey sticks. I hung up on her when she started bringing my family into things. I called the owner and explained to him what happened, which he wasn't shocked about, and had told me that when she came in that morning she was going on a rampage like the Tasmanian Devil. After finding out why she was freaking out, he promptly fired her. I was shocked, since this was such a small company and he definitely needed her. I had heard from another co-worker that she ended up destroying a bunch of company property on her way out, and now she's facing a lawsuit due to the damages. So thankful she revealed her true self to everyone, and that I'm a far, far away from that company and her. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you all next time. Hasta la pasta.